Good morning, everybody. It's time for morning manna. Time for morning manna. Happy Friday. Thank goodness it's finally Friday. Thank God it's finally Friday. Hope you're going to have a great weekend. Don't know what your plans are. I hope you, one of the plans are is to go to somebody's church, uh, whether you are in attendance in the building or whether you are watching streaming. Nevertheless, I want you to go to somebody's church on this Sunday, but I got a word for you on this Friday. Got a word for you on this Friday morning, manna fam. How y'all doing? What you gonna do this weekend? What's on the agenda? Uh, I know what's on my agenda as always, preparing for Sunday and then Sunday, and then uh, the Sunday afternoon nap. You know what that is, you know what time it is. Hey, I got the text to talk and the takeaway, and uh, you already know what it's gonna be this morning. We're putting the period, the exclamation point at the end of the paragraph on how do you harvest in dry places? It's been something every day this week, and we're gonna finish out today. And we're gonna talk about today a desert blessing. Bishop, what do you mean a desert blessing? Just hold the phone, I'll give it to you in a minute. But a desert blessing. How do you get a blessing? How do you be blessed in the midst of your desert? It's the text, the talk, and the takeaway. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Then you know what to do. You got to share the manna. You got to give the hearts and the likes. Let's get right into the word this morning. Here's the text. You already know it's very familiar, uh, but I want to read it again and let you and get the context of what's going on in this text. It's Matthew 4 and 4. Jesus talking is responding to Satan, and this is what he said. Jesus answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live, shall not live by bread alone, but will live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, what are you talking about this morning about a desert blessing? Let's look at the context of what's going on here. Now, in the previous verses, Jesus has just been blessed and anointed with the Holy Spirit. You already know it. John the Baptist has baptized him. The, de the dove comes down. Uh, it then rests on him and remains on him, the text says. And God speaks from heaven and says, this is my son, my beloved son, whom I am well pleased immediately the spirit leads him into where? The desert. Leads him into the wilderness. This is the time in which Jesus is there. 40 days and 40 nights, he is fasting and praying, and it comes on the heels of one of the highlights in his life. Now, this is not what we're going to tell you in our three points that we generally give you, but always know that you will find yourself in a desert place right after you've been off of a high. Okay, now you got the context and here is this thing that is the thread that goes with all three temptations that Satan brings to him. Notice this, maybe you have missed it. If you be the son of God, then jump off of this mountain. If you be the son of God, then worship me while we are at the very height of the temple. If you be the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Now, a lot of times we get caught up into the three things that he is now asking Jesus to do. But the needle that threads or the, that what I want you to see, the thing that threads the needle of all of that is this. If you be the son of God, the major temptation here is Jesus being. It's his being. If you be the son of God. Now, I want you to remember, if you remember the movie, The Passion, and if you not watched it, please watch the movie, The Passion. It's a few years old now. But in the movie, The Passion, if you remember the scene of there in the garden of Gethsemane and the snake that slithers up to Jesus as he is praying, that turns into a person, if you notice what he says, if you be, he tempts the being of Christ. When you're in a dry place, what is at law 
or what is at stake is your being. Who are you? So here are the three things that I want you to grab a hold of that takes place in this desert place, but still is a blessing. Here it is. The first thing you need to grab a hold of is whose you are. When you're trying to get a hold of in a desert situation and you're being tempted and how do I bring a harvest out of this, know that the major temptation is whether or not you know whose you are. If you know whose you are, whose you are, who do you belong to? You belong to God Almighty. He was the one that led Jesus into the desert. It says the spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. Why? Because there had to be something. God just said, look, Jesus, I, you are my beloved son in which I am, in whom I am well pleased of. Now, go be tempted. I told you who you are. Now, you've got to get in a situation where you know whose you are. That got to sink in to your situation because no matter what the desert situation you find yourself in, you got to know who do you belong to. Here's the second thing. Who are you? Who are you? Temptations are always there to take you from being who you are. Temptations are always trying to take you from being who you are. When you find yourself in a dry place and you're looking for the harvest, you, if you're not careful, you'll find a harvest in a place that will take you from being who you are. You belong to him. And then he says, in him, you live, move, and have your very what? Being. So who are you? Whose you are? And then here's the third thing. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Whenever you're in a desert, whenever you're in a wilderness, whenever you're in a situation, it, it, the future is at stake. Who do you want to be? Who, who do you want to be? Do I want to be uh, the wife, the husband? Do I want to be uh, the son, the daughter? Do I want to be the auntie? Do I want to be the great worker? Do I want to be the person whom I know God has called me to be? Because if I want to be that person, what is standing in the way at this moment is a temptation that will take me from that place. It will always take me from that place. So let me cover it again before I give you the takeaway. When you find yourself, it's just like Christ. Don't get caught up into just the bread. Now he says, now he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So I'm holding on to the word. The word reaffirms whose I am, who I am, and who I want to be. Therefore, when I know, here's your takeaway, when I know those things, there's a blessing in my desert. You can't mess with me if I know who I am. You can't take me from who or what I should be doing because I know who I am, who I belong to, and who I want to be, what I want to accomplish. And no matter what the situation is, that's the blessing beyond everything else because I'm gonna nibble on his word while I'm in this dry place. And his word is gonna constantly remind me who I am, whose I am, and who I wanna be. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I hope you have a great weekend. If you are looking for somewhere to go to church, if you wanna watch a wonderful worship experience, you can always tune in to New Life 2 One on YouTube at 9.30 or right here on Facebook Live at 9.30. I got a word for you on this uh, morning as well as gonna be Sunday. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Share the manna. Bye now.